गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन हेलो या गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन इट्स वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग शेप टू बिगिन द सेशन या इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव फिनिश विद हाउ टू ऑप्टिमाइज द प्रोग्राम परफॉर्मेंस वेरियस मेथड लाइक वर्चुअल मेमोरी यस प्रोग्राम साइकिल PCB that is a program control block right now the next topic is understanding the modern processor that is what are the various processor that is available or how, and how to understand what are the various modern processor that is used with the optimization blockers that is used with the micro architecture so up to this point we have applied the optimization method what are the various optimization method that does not rely on any of the features of the target machine but uh, this can reduce or this simply reduce the overhead procedure calls and eliminate some of the critical optimization blockers that means whatever the blocker areas whatever the procedure call that is overhead or that is uh, that reduces the overhead of the procedure call that eliminates the optimization blocker that causes the difficulties for optimizing the compiler so whenever we are using the compiler that is used so that is used with the micro architecture of the processor that is what are the various system design by which a microprocessor executes the instruction and getting the last bit or every last bit of the performance also requires a detailed analysis of the program as well as a code generation that is how to generate the code uh, that is tuned for the target processor nonetheless we can apply some optimization that will yield an overall performance improvement on a large scale on or we can say the last scale of the processes the retail performance results we report they are, are hold for other machines but the general principle of operation and optimization apply to a wide variety of machines so we can apply with the wide variety of machines with the wide variety of the data so whenever we are holding various principle for for this uh, we can say the processor microprocessor that will hold other machine but the general principle of the operation and the optimization apply to a wide variety of the machine and to understand the ways to improve the performance whatever the performance area we require a basic understanding of the data basic understanding of the micro architecture of the modern processor what modern processor we are using and due to a large number of transistors we can integrate into one variety of the data integrated into a single chip modern microprocessor employ complex hardware that attempts to maximize the program performance and the one result is that their actual operation is far different from the view that is perceived by looking at the machine level program so whatever the machine level program whatever the data we are using so that is used by the code level with that is used with the with the generations of the pc fetching the values from the registers memory performing our operation storing the results back to our register or the memory location in the actual processor a number of the instructions are evaluated simultaneously that is a phenomenon that is referred as a instruction level parallelism and in some times there can there can be 100 or more instruction in the flight that can elaborate the mechanisms by the microprocessor but the latency bound is encountered when a series of the operations might be performed in a strict sequence because the result of one operation is required before the next one can begin and this bound can limit the program performance when the data dependencies in the code limit the ability of the processor to use with the block diagram that is used with the instruction cycle that is used with the fetch cycle the instructions are also available for reading the instruction from the memory and also generating a sequence of primitive operations and the execution unit can uh, they perform the operations and indicates whether or not the branches are correctly predicated now this is the instruction cycle there is the fetch control instruction decode retirement unit and there is the register file instruction cache now these are the various uh, we can say the performance levels that is available within the data that is used within the branch manager that is used within the fp add integer load store and then we are using the cache memory for for uh, using the cache properties whatever the cache properties we are using that is the cache memory that is one of the fastest memory now when we talk about the throughput that is uh, bound or that also bounds or characterizes the raw computing capacity of the processor's functional unit and this bound becomes ultimate limit on the program performance whatever the program performance rate are whatever the limit whatever the foundation that also characterizes with the computing capacity of the processor function unit now 
when we talk about the or when we talk about the overall operation that simplified or that shows a very simplified view of the modern microprocessor and our hypothetical processor design is based loosely on the structure of the Intel Core i7 processor design why because this is the latest version or the latest processor that is the i7 processor design which is often referred by the project name Nellam and this micro uh, architecture typifies the high end a processor produced by a number of the manufacturers since the late 1990 and that is also described in the industry as being super scalar that means it is used with the out of order resulting in the ICU that is the instruction control unit that is responsible for reading a sequence of the instruction from the memory and also execute or take out the execution unit yes that is taken with the branch prediction speculative execution, instruction decoding logic that takes the actual production, uh, primitive operations, whatever the primitive operation that are sometimes known as the micro operations. And each of these operations also performs some simple computation tasks which is adding the two numbers, reading the data from the memory, writing the data to the memory. Now, this is a typical x86 implementation that is used with the instruction, that is used with the logic that involves add L EAX, EDX. So we are adding the two values, two variables to register that is EAX and the EDX. Now that is converted into a single operation and this involves one or four memory locations. Whatever the memory locations we are using that is also available with the multiple operation that is carried out with the data. And EU receives the operation from the instruction first cycle or the unit that performs or that receives a number of the cycle that can use with the clock per cycle. Now next part is when EU receives the operation from the instruction of a cycle, typically it can receive a number of them on each clock cycle. That means it will use within nanoseconds and these operations are dispatched to the set of the functional unit that may include the input unit, that may include the memory unit, CU, ALU, CPU that performs actual operations. And these functional units are specialized to handle specific types of operations that is based on the unit that is based on the Intel Core i7 and we can see that there are three functional units are dedicated to the computations while the remaining two are for the loading that is reading and writing the memory and each computational unit can perform multiple different operations that all can perform at least basic integer operation such as addition and the bitwise logical operations, floating point operations and the integer multiplication also requires more complex hardware. So these can only be handled by a specific functional unit. And when we read the data, when we write the memory that is implemented by the load and the store units and the load unit handles operations that reads the data from the memory into the processor and this unit can be used, also can be used to perform the address operation that will be represented, that will be stored in the data cache. And within the ICU, the retirement unit that tracks of the ongoing processing and make sure that it obeys the sequential semantics of the machine level program, the figure shows a register file containing the integer, floating point and more recently SSE registers as a part of the retirement unit because this unit controls updating of these registers. And as an uh, going and going with the instruction that is decoded, information about it is placed on into a first fin, first out queue. First in first out queue means that is required in the queue until of the two outcomes and uh, once the operations and uh, instructions are completed with the branch operation then the instructions can be retired with any updates to the program registers that can be made. That can be flushed out with the instructions with disregarding any results if there is any result that is occupied that is used by this means or by that means mispredictions will be avoided cannot alter, will not alter the program state. And the most common mechanisms for the controlling or controlling the operations or communication of the operands among the execution units is known as register renaming. And when an instruction that update the register R is decoded, a tag T is generated giving a unique identifier to the result of the operations. An entry will be added to a table maintaining the association between the program register R and the tag T for an operation that will update the register and whenever we are using the instruction that will update the register R 
that will be occupied with the operand with the decoded instruction that will execute with the constraint time for the operand results. Now this is one of the results that is VT that indicates that the operation with the tag T produces a value V. So T is the time for the tag and the result is the value is the V. What is the latency in the seek time? What is the latency time that is used to reach on a sector? And the seek time that is used to reach on a track. So first of all, we have to reach on a track that is a concentric circles. And then we have to reach on a sector that is in between. So the access time is seek time plus latency time. So latency and the issue time characteristics of Intel i7 arithmetic operation that denotes or that indicate the total number of the clock cycle required to perform the actual operations while issue time indicates the minimum number of cycles between two operations and the times for division depends on the data values and that depends on the minimum number of the clock cycle between two successive operations of the same type and when we see the latency that increase when the word size increases for example when we say about the single to double precision for more complex data types example from integer to floating point and for more complex operations for example addition to multiplication that we are using the clock cycle that is used with the series of the stages that is known as a pipelining and the pipeline function unit is implementing as a series of the stages each of which perform part of the operation for example when you talk about the typical floating point that contains three stages or the three cycle latency one to process the exponent values one to add the fractions one to round the result and the arithmetic operations can proceed through the stages in the clock succession uh, yes, this is rather than waiting for the operations to complete before the next begins. And this capability can be exploited only if there are successive logically independent operations to be performed. And the functional units will issue time series or the times of the one cycle that are set to be fully pipelined. Then we can start a new operation that is each or every clock cycle. And the issue time for this is given as a 0 0.33 for the integer addition due to the fact that the hardware has fully pipelined operations or unit capable of performing the integer operations. And the processor has also pipelined that is the issue time that begins to perform the addition clock cycle and the divider is also used with the floating point number that is the just the issue time that is just a few cycles less than its latency. What this means is that the divider must complete all but the last few steps of a division before it can begin with the new one. And there are latencies time, there are issues time for the division that are given as ranges because of the some foundations, combination of the dividend and the divisor. And the maximum throughput of the unit is defined as the reciprocal of the issue time. Now this is the latency for the integer. One is the addition, multiplication, addition, floating, division, 1, 3, 3, 4, 5, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. This is the latency bound for the CPE for any function that is used with a throughput bound. For example, when it was a say about the issue time for this operation as 0 0.33. The next is an abstract model of the processor operation that is used with the data flow representation of the program. That is a graphical notation that shows how the data dependencies between the different operation constrain the order in which they are executed. And these constraints then leads to the critical path in the graph putting a lower bound on the number of the clock cycle that is required to purchase or execute a set of the machine instructions. Now, from machine level code to the data flow graphs that is used with the combine that is used as an example of the RAX, RCX that holding the loop bound limit that is a limit XMM0 that holding the accumulator value ACC. This is the load then multiply mul add compare LG or JG. Now these are the code segment that is used into uh, that is divided into the four categories. One is a read only, one is a write only, one is a local, one is a loop. Read only means that perform the operation or the whatever the source value, whatever the data value, whatever the register we are using that are the read only. We cannot modify the content, but we can only read the contents. Then write only, these are used as a destination of the data movement operation that is used. So there are no registers in this loop. That is a write only. 
then local these are uploaded or updated and used within the loop but there is no dependency from one iteration to another and the condition code registers are example of this local loop that is given for this loop and the comparison operator is used by the JL and then at last there is a looping these are used as the source values and the destination for the loop with the values generated in one iteration that is being used in the another operation Now this is a data flow representation of computation by the n iteration by the inner loop. This is the load. This is mul add, load, mul add, load, mul add, load, mul add. This shows a data flow representation of the n iteration by the inner loop of the function that is known as a combined flow. Now these are the other performance factors that is available over here. These are the exercises or the problem exercises, practice exercises. Now next is a loop.